everyone. My name is Tim Height, and I'm with Seco Tools. I'm the milling products manager for North America. The product that we're talking about is the RNMU 12 R220 28 button mill, double sided. The insert, it's an RNMU 12 with 16 cutting edges, and it has the indexing flats similar to a double octomill 05, similar size as a matter of fact. However, the cutter body itself does not use the pin locations like the double octomill does. Rather, it uses a hardened flat that's machined into the pocket. So that gives us a little bit better application security and gives us more air area for the insert to make contact with the body. The maximum depth of cut is 236 thousandths or six millimeters. However, if we want to achieve all 16 edges, we can only run to 67 thousandths maximum or 1.7 millimeter depth of cut. So the insert comes in several grades, many of them aerospace related. Oftentimes we see in aerospace type materials or high temp alloys that we're running a lighter depth of cut anyway with these types of products. So it's maximum benefit to the customer because of all the edges we can offer. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the cutter bodies. The cutter bodies start at a range of one and a quarter inch or 32 millimeter and work its way up to three inches in diameter or 80 millimeter. They're differentially pitched to offer maximum performance and minimize the harmonics during the cutting process. So people ask me about ramping, and ramping is for sure something we can do. However, because it's a negative insert design, it's gonna be a little bit lighter than what we'd normally see with an RP or a positive style insert. So for example, a two and a half inch diameter cutter body would only give us about 0.4 degrees ramp capability. And the cutter system is capable of helical interpolation as well, but at that lighter ramp angle. I wanna talk a little bit about average chip thickness because that's really important, especially in high-tech materials, is average chip thickness and maintaining that. So the slide shows a little bit of uh, information there. One at 67 thousandths depth of cut, which is the maximum to achieve 16 edges, and the other image is showing the cutter again at 236 thousandths, which we would achieve eight edges with that. But if you notice the difference between the two, the working diameter changes quite a bit between the two images. So it's important to be recalculating our working diameter and recalculating our RPM based on what that working diameter is and the surface footage that we're going to be required to run in that material. I think that you're going to benefit from this and you're going to like what you see and uh, with that I'll let you go. Thank you.